Hey, this is Brock Lemire's Embedded Systems Design. We're looking at the analog to digital converter on the MSP430. And in this video, we're going to do our first program where we read in an analog voltage from one of the pins on the launchpad board. And then we'll kind of look at how the whole thing works. Uh, we'll, we'll pull the conversion complete flag in order to track when the thing's done. Now, obviously, pulling this flag is not how you'll ultimately do it, but it'll give us, uh, it'll allow us to, to learn about the ADC without having to set up an interrupt service routine uh, yet. Uh, so this will get us kind of visibility to just in general how this works. Okay, so here's a little experiment I want to do. Uh, let's see, let's create a sine wave that goes from zero to 3.4 volts, and we'll set up the input voltage range of the converter to be zero to 3.4 volts. And that'll be nice because it just goes from VSS to VCC. Uh, and then we'll bring that thing in on port one bit two, which happens to be uh, analog input channel two. And it, it's right here on the launchpad board. So this pin right here. So we'll take a sine wave generator and we'll put a ground, uh, the ground we can pick up on this pin and then we'll drive the, the amplitude into here, the signal into there. And then what we'll do just to show that we can respond to the voltage coming in in real time is we'll just set up a little uh, little if else statement that says, you know, if, if you're below uh, three volts, light up the green LED, and if you're above three volts, light up the red LED. And so it'll it'll be green most of the time, red a little bit, green most of the time. And then we what we can do is we can set up the frequency to be really slow, and then we can change it in real time and watch it flash faster and faster and show that we're actually responding in real time. And then we can slow it way, way down and actually look at the debugger so that we can kind of see the values uh, in the uh, ADC memory zero register as, as it's coming in. Okay, so here's my board right here. Uh, I'm gonna use the analog discovery two to generate my sine wave. And so I'm coming out of W1, which is uh, the arbitrary waveform generator channel one. And you can see I go right into port one bit two right there. And then I grab the ground off the AD2 and I, there, luckily there's a ground right here. So go ahead and connect that ground right there. And that's, that's the setup for this experiment. Okay, so let's look at the setup for this uh, program. Uh, first of all, we're going to have uh, channel A2 that's going to drive the ADC core. And so we need to go into the port one function select registers and choose, you know, we need to set that to 1-1 one, one for bit two. And that changes the pin settings uh, because that's where we're going to read in. Instead, it'll come in on the same pin as port one bit two. So we'd need to do that. And then in addition to the port function select register, we also have to tell the ADC where the channel is coming from. So we have to actually go in and change the ADC input channel to A2. So there's some settings associated with that. Uh, the reference voltage will go across. We actually don't need to do anything because the default goes from zero to 3.4. So we can accept the default values from that. Uh, we do want to put the ADC into 12-bit uh, mode. So we're going to put that into 12-bit mode, uh, so that'll be something we need to do. Um, for the clock source, we do need to choose SM clock. Uh, we will leave the generators at, uh, the prescalers at one, so we're not gonna change that. So the ADC clock will be one megahertz, but I do wanna put it into 16 cycle mode. So we'll go ahead and, and change this into 16 conversion cycles. That'll take our controller down, or our sample rate down to something less than uh, 100 kilosamples, uh, but we'll, we'll accept the default values for a lot of this stuff. Uh, we do need to put the ADC sample and hold trigger to one zero. We, that'll say that we generate the sample. We tell it when to sample as opposed to letting the input signal take that. And then we need to turn the ADC on, obviously. So that's important. <laughs> and then, you know, the resolution setting is uh, one zero. So remember, we have to clear the leasing of a bit and then set the uh, most significant bit, okay? And so, and then what we'll do is we'll trigger the the conversion using the enable and on, or the enable and start bits, and then we'll just watch uh, the thing come in. We'll read it from ADC mem, and then we'll, basically when we start it, we'll pull the interrupt or the conversion complete flag, and then when it's done, we'll grab this, and then we'll do our logic for, for whether to turn the LEDs on and off. Okay, so let's fire up CCS, and we're ready to do our first... A uh, little guy here. So we go file new CCS project. Okay. And we're going to call this, we're in C ADC. It's our first ADC. And we'll just go sampling P1 bit 2 polling. Okay. And that's to indicate how we're going to handle the monitoring conversion complete. And then here comes our program. So we'll go ahead and nuke that header right there. All right. And then here we go. So we're going to set up the ports first um, in this situation. 
And so let's do LED one. So we'll do uh, set port one bit zero to output and that's LED one. And we do that by going uh, P one DIR and then we're gonna set bit zero, okay? And then we'll go to, we're gonna set port six, no, port six bit six to output and that's LED two. So port six bit six, okay? So then that's gonna be P six DIR set bit six. Okay, so those are my LEDs. And now what I need to do is I need to go and do the port one function select register. So port one select one, and I'm going to actually set both bits and it's bit two. Okay, so this, um, let's see, this is going to choose a analog function for port one bit two. Okay, so port one select zero is also uh, bit set, okay, so bit two. And just a note, we need these equal to zero, zero, or excuse me, one, one equals the analog. Okay, so that's why I'm setting both of those. Okay, so port one is the register, select one and zero work in conjunction, and I'm setting bit two on both of them. And then we'll go ahead and let's turn on the analog, or turn on the digital I.O. So port power module five, CTL zero, I need to clear the lock low power mode five bit. So that turns on I.O. Okay, now we're ready to finally do our thing, which is configure the ADC. All right, so here we go. So the way that you typically do this is you go register by register, okay? So the first control or configuration register we're gonna set up is the ADC CTL0, and I'm gonna put that on the clipboard, okay? <laughs> so here's what the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to set a sample or conversion uh, clock cycles equal to 16. Okay, so the default is eight. So we're gonna change this to 16 um, in order to, I don't know, you know, just to kind of slow it down so our sample rate is less than, you know, 100, is slower. <laughs> okay, and so what we need to do is we need to set this to zero one. Now, in order to do this, you actually have to clear out the bit because the default setting has a one in it. So I'm gonna do, I'm gonna clear out a D C S H T. So that's the sample and hold uh, clock cycle timing. And so that's the first bit. So I clear it out. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the A D C S H T sample hold uh, timer cycle. And it, not that I actually use a mask called underscore two. So that's this bit position two setting, or actually, no, it's the, it chooses binary two. So this is going to be, um, it's actually going to be one zero. Okay. So, yeah, one zero. Okay, so let's take a look at that. Okay, so we got one zero, which means 16 cycles. Okay, all right, life is good. Uh, the only other thing in this register is to actually turn on the ADC. So uh, you do that by setting the ADC on bit. So this is uh, turn on ADC. It's always a good thing to have it on. And then the, the that's all the, bit, the settings that we need to do for minimal configuration in the uh, control register zero. So then the next control register we do is ADC CTL one. Okay. So in here, uh, we get to change the clock source to SM clock, and then we're going to change the uh, sample signal source to the sample timer. Okay. So let's do the clock source first. So what we do is we go ahead and set uh, the ADC SSEL underscore two bit, and that chooses SM clock. And then what we'll do is we won't have any prescaler settings, so we'll get a one megahertz ADC clock. And then of course, that's not our sample rate. We chose 16 cycles. So at a minimum, it's gonna take 16 of those SM clock cycles to do the conversion. Uh, the other thing in here is we go ahead and set the ADC SHP bit. And what that does is this is sample signal source equals sampling timer. And what that means is that we're gonna allow the ADC system itself to when I start the conversion, it's gonna tell the sample when to sample, okay? So as opposed to allowing some external signal to do it, we'll allow our own system to do that, okay? All right, life is good. And then we're done with that register. So then the next register is the control two register. And in here we set the resolution. That's the only setting. But remember the resolution had a non-zero reset value in it. So it's set to a 10 bit resolution for some reason. So we actually have to clear out one of the bits. Uh, first, so we have to clear out the least significant bit. So what you have to do is you have to come in here and go 
ADCRES, so you clear that, so this clear uh, resolution. And then what I do is I set, I set ADCRES underscore RES underscore two. And what that does is it chooses the uh, 12 bit selection by putting a binary two in there. So 12 bit resolution. Okay, now that's that's actually all we need to do in that register. So then the next, there's four configuration registers. So then you go to ADCMCTL0. This is the memory control. And the only setting we have in here is to choose the ADC input channel. So we go ADC in channel underscore two. So these masks are set up to be very readable. So uh, we're gonna do ADC input equals uh, a2, which happens to also come in on port one bit two. So we had to do two things to get this signal into our ADC. So we had to actually do the port one function select register in order to use the analog function. And then we had to tell the ADC, go ahead and route that to the sample and holder. Okay. All right. So that's the setup. Uh, so let's do this. Let's go ahead and do a while loop and we're ready for our main function. And here's what we're going to do. So I am going to uh, enable the transition, and this is going to be a new statement for us. It's ADC CTL0, and I am going to set some bits. I can do two bit settings in the same statement uh, by oring them together. So check this out. I'm going to do ADC ENC. So that's enable conversion in addition to ADC start conversion. So this is uh, enable and start conversion. And I was able to do that in one shot, one statement. And so I set both bits. So the way it works is it takes both masks and it ors them together to form a new mask. And then it performs the bitwise uh, oring on this value. Okay, so the conversion has started. And so now what, all we do is we pull the flag. Okay, so I'm going to sit here in a while loop. And what I'm going to do is I want to watch for here's the bit that I'm watching ADC IFG zero. So that's the, the bit I care about. That's the bit mask but it's in the ADC IFG register. And so I can and those together, do this uh, anding. And basically when that is equal to zero, it's not complete, okay? So then what this means is that I will sit here as long as it, the conversion's going, because this will be zero. And then as soon as it's one, I'll pop out. And so then that's really all I need. I don't even need to put my curly brackets. So that just says, wait. And then what happens is I'm ready to read. So I can go ADC underscore value is equal to ADC mem zero. And now you got to go, where did ADC value come from? Well, that's going to be a, uh, let's make it a global so we can kind of uh, unsigned int ADC value. Make it a global so it's easier to find in the debugger. And so I create a, uh, I create a variable and then I just write to it. And then I got my thing. So that's it. So now all we need to do is do the logic for our little test function, which we're here to do. So let's do this. If eight, we'll go, if ADC value is greater than a, a value that corresponds to three volts. So I did the calculation using equations we've covered, and that comes out to be about 3613 for 12 bits, okay? Uh, and then what I'm gonna do, if it is, is guess what? I'm gonna do port one bit, out is I'm gonna go ahead and turn on bit zero. Okay, so this is uh, LED one equals on, and this is the red LED. And then otherwise I'll do port six out and I'll clear the bit six. And that is LED two equals off, and that's the greener. Okay, all right, so there's that. And then I'm done there. And then all I do is I go else and I'll go ahead and do this. And I'm just gonna copy these little buddies because I already drew, wrote them out. And boom, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna pop them right there. And in this situation, I will turn off bit zero. And so I'm gonna say LED one is off. And then when it's below three volts, I'll go ahead and turn on LED two, okay? All right, so then LED two is on. All right, life is good, that's it. So that's my entire program. So pretty straightforward. Uh, it's, the hardest part is just knowing which uh, configuration registers to with, mess with. So let's go ahead and fire this thing up and see what happens. Okay, no errors. So now let's go ahead and test this thing. So let's go ahead and run it and then we'll go into, let's set up our arbitrary waveform generator. So I'm gonna use, I use waveforms to control it, the 82, and I actually, I go to this tool, WaveGen, 
Okay, and so then it's gonna output a sine wave. <clears throat> okay, all right, so let's change the frequency to one hertz. And then what we wanna do is we want it to go from zero to 3.4. So go ahead and change the offset to be 1.7 and then the amplitude to 1.7. And there it is, okay, so it goes from zero up to there. And it'll once we're above three volts, it should turn on. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and run this and see what happens. <laughs> Look at this. Look at it. So it's going re uh, red. Most of the time it's green, a little bit of red. Most of the time it's green, a little bit of red. And when it's red, remember, that's when it's above three volts. And so let's, to prove to ourselves that this is actually changing, let's change this to like two hertz in real time. And see, it's faster, faster, faster. And then let's go ahead and let's change it to five. <laughs> okay, cool. And then we can actually, what if we did the offset uh, like down to zero so it didn't even go above three volts? And then it's like, oh, okay, there it is. And then let's put it always above three volts. So let's put it like uh, four, let's put it like five. It's always on there, okay? Get out of that mode though real quick. 1.7, okay. Okay. <laughs> okay, awesome. So it's working. Our, our program is actually working. Okay, so let's do one last thing. Uh, let's look at the value of the ADC in the debugger. So in order to see it in the debugger, let's slow it way down. So come back into your waveform generator and let's change this to be like 0 0.1 Hertz. And so what that's gonna do is it's gonna make the period of the sine wave 10 seconds. So we'll be able to like run, stop, run, stop, run, stop, run, stop many multiple times throughout this 10 second period. And so then come back into here and what we need to do is we need to stop the, we need to look at the ADC. So come up into registers and we're gonna come into the ADC and expand that. And then if we go down, we actually can see ADC memory right here and put it into decimal, uh, cause that's the way we worked it. And then what we can do is come down here and let's set a break point at this moment right here because We'll start the uh, conversion, we'll wait for the conversion to complete, and then we read from it. So when we break right here, it'll show us the last value read. Okay, so then let's go ahead and run it and see what happens. So, okay, see ADC memory changing? So it's like, okay, it's up. Okay, so it's going down, going down, coming up, coming up, coming up. It's above uh, 3600, so the red LED's on. Now it's going down. Red LED went off. It's going down, <clears throat> and it's going down, and it's going up. <laughs> it's going up. Okay, so there it is. That's it's basically sampling that sine wave every time I hit the play button. So that's awesome. Uh, we did it. All right. Uh, the, congratulations. That's your first ADC program, and it worked. All right. As always, remember support my channel by subscribing and see. You.